A lot of web apps today integrate a normal email and password authentication method together with an extra login code validation to better secure users' accounts. In this video, we are going to create a two-factor authentication page that uses an authenticator app to generate the one-time login codes. We are going to build this using the Svelte Kit JavaScript framework. Let's get right into it. Let's first set up a new Svelte Kit app called Svelte Auth via the npm create command. We'll use the Svelte Projects template, use JS doc for comments with no additional options. We can then install dependencies and start the dev server via npm run dev. You'll get a link to your local Svelte server where you can preview your app. Before we jump to the code, here's an overview of what you're going to make. Our two-factor authentication system will have four main components. A user registration page where a user will create an account, a settings page to enable two-factor authentication which after setting up will add the login page for the first authentication step and an OTP page for the second authentication step. Svelkit has a file system folder-based router where if you want to create a register page for example, you add a folder named register in the roots directory and a plus page.svelte file where the Svelte component will be. Let's do the same for the settings page, the login page and the OTP page. Let's get started with implementing the register page. We want to keep our register page simple. So we want to support only email and password fields. We can add a wrapper for the page, a page title and add the form. This form is going to send the fields to the server for processing. That's why we give it a post method. We can just leave the action empty for now as you won't use it. I'll tell you why in a bit. First, let's add the email input, the password input and the submit button. The form is complete but looks a bit ugly. So let's add some styles. We want to center our register form so we give it a maximum width and a left and right auto margin. We also use Flexbox to place each label and input in their own column. Add margins to the labels and also add paddings for the text inputs and give them a gray border and a nice border radius. We also do the same for the submit button. The form looks much better. Now let's figure out where the submitted data will be sent to. To add an action that receives form input, we need to create a plus page.server.js file next to the plus page.svelte component in our register root. An action is defined by exporting a named actions object with the actions in it. Let's first add the svelte types for this so that we can get better edit autocomplete. In SvelteKit, there's two types of actions, a default action and a named action. Remember that we didn't name the form action in the form element. So to add an action for it, since it has no name, we use a default key as the action name. If we had named the action something like register for example, then the action key will be register instead of default. To get our form values, we use the request object which is automatically passed into our action and call its form data method. With this, we can now get the email and the password. The next step is saving these values to the database. Before that, let me explain a bit how we'll handle authentication using an authenticator app. Once a user registers, we generate a secret code for them using their email address and save this secret with their email and password. This secret will be used to generate a QR code that will then be shown to the app user to scan with the authenticator app. Once connected, they'll start getting a six-digit code in their app that changes every minute. When logging in, we'll be asking them for this code and authenticating it with their secret. To achieve all this, we need to install a few more dependencies. OTP lib to generate the secret, QR code to generate the QR code, and SQLite 3 to interact with an SQLite database, which will be our main data store. Let's set up the database. We'll be adding the database utilities in the util database.js file. As a start, we need a couple of utilities. One for initializing the database connection. Let's call it get database. This will return an instance of the sqlite.database class. Another function will run SQL queries on the database. Let's call it run query. It will have two parameters, the SQL string and the parameters to be passed to the SQL query. The get database function will return a promise that will resolve successfully if initializing the database via sqlite3.database works without errors. If it fails, the promise will throw an error. For the run query, we also return a promise that will resolve with the results if the db.run function executes successfully and throw an error if it doesn't. Going out of topic a bit, you might have noticed that we resolve this keyword if the query succeeds. The result of the query will be added to the execution context of the run function, which in this case is this. If we use an arrow function as the callback, the function will fail because this loses context in arrow functions and becomes global. It will no longer hold the results of the query. 
With these utilities set, we can run our first query to create the user's table. We can create a simple database migration system by adding a script migrations.js file. Here, we create a run function and directly call it in the file. We call it directly because we don't expect to import this file anywhere in our project. It's a script we'll run in the terminal to set up our database in one run. We also catch and log the error if the function fails to execute. There's really no difference if we use console.error or console.log here. The Node.js console prints them the same way. In the run function, we can run a query that creates the user's table with ID, email, password and secret fields and then log a success message if it runs. Another bit of a side note is that when you run the file on the terminal, you'll get a weird module not found error for the database import that makes no sense. The file exists. Well, here's why. Node.js didn't support imports using the import keyword for a while until version 14, if my memory serves me right. Part of the rules for importing using the import keyword is that you must add the file extension at the end of the import for it to work. So we need to add a .js to the end of the database import. Running the file again works without any error. Now that the database setup is done, let's go back to the plus page.server.js file and finish up user registration. First, let's start by generating the unique secret via the generate secret util from the OTP library. We can then run a create user query that inserts the email, password, and secret into the database. For the password parameter, we need to hash it before inserting into the database so we can install the bcrypt module, import it, and then run the bcrypt.hash function on the password. We then need to generate the key that will be used for authenticating via a QR code. The generated key will follow the key URI format. In this format, we can embed information such as the authentication method, the app name, the user email, and the secret. We'll use the authenticator.keyURI method for this. This function accepts three parameters. The account name, which is a unique identifier for each user. For our case, we'll use the email. The second parameter is the name of the issuer of this token. This can be the app name, so we'll call it Svelkit app. The last parameter is the unique secret that you generated earlier. We can then set the cookies for the user ID and the key we just generated. We'll use them for the next step in the authentication process. Finally, we redirect to the settings page. In Svelkit, you redirect by throwing a redirect error so that Svelkit catches it and handles the redirect. Our registration page is now done. Filling in the email and password and then clicking register should now redirect us to the settings page. Our settings page needs the key we just generated in order to generate the QR code. We need to create a plus page.server.js file in the settings folder and inside it export a load function. This function should return the page props. We can use the cookies object to get the user ID and the key. If they are missing, we can just redirect back to the login page to regenerate them. We can also get the user details like email from the database via db.get function from our database util. Next, we need to generate the QR code that will display to the user. We use the QR code package for this via the toData URL function to convert the key to a QR code image URL. We can then return the URL and the user. How do we get access to this data for the UI? On the settings plus page.svelte file, we can add a script tag and inside it, access the props via export let data. Data will contain user and URL props. We can, for example, print the user email via data.user.email. Let's display a message telling the user to scan the QR code and display the code below the message. If you look at the page, you can see that the QR code is displayed. Next, we are going to test it by scanning the QR code via an authenticator app. Google Authenticator is available for phone download on the Play Store or the App Store for iPhones. You can scan the QR code with your phone and it will add the user automatically. For demonstration purposes, we are going to use the Authenticator Chrome extension which works just as well as Google Authenticator. We can also pin it to our status bar for easy use. To scan the code, open the extension from the status bar. Click on the scan icon at the top right of the pop-up to start scanning the code. Highlight the section of the screen with a QR code to scan it. If successful, you'll see the email added message. If you reopen the extension pop-up, you'll notice a one-time password code generated successfully, which will change every 60 seconds. You can also see the app name we set and the user email we registered with. The user has now successfully enabled two-factor authentication. Next step is authenticating the code. Let's update our settings page a little to accommodate that by changing the message and then adding a form with a code input and a submit button 
that will send the code to the server for checking. Our form looks good, but we can make the input and button look similar to the register form. We can use VeltKit's layout feature to share the styles. Let's create an app.css file at the root of the src folder and then remove the css styles from the register page css and copy them over to the css file. We can also adjust the css a bit to cover the settings page too and make the qr code image bigger. Next, we can create a plus layout.svelte file at the root of the roots folder. Add a script tag and deport the app.css file there. We can then add a slot tag where all the pages will be rendered in. With that, all the register page CSS will be applied to our page and all other pages. The form looks much better. To handle the form submission, we export an actions object in the plus page.server.js file for the settings page. We are still going to use a default action here. We get the code from the form data and the user ID from the cookies. To validate the code, we need the user secret to save while registering. So we can get the user via a. Okay, this is getting a bit redundant. We should have a util for this. So let's create a get user util in util database.js file. It accepts a user ID parameter and returns a promise that resolves with the user if db.get succeeds. Let's go back to what we were doing. We get the user via the get user function and then use the authenticator utility from OTP lib library to check the code against the user secret. If it checks out, we set an OTP authenticated session cookie that expires after seven days and then redirect to the home page. Ideally, if this cookie expires, then the user has to re-enter the code. If the check fails, we redirect the user back to the settings page to re-enter the code. We set an error query string that we can use to show a user an error if authentication fails. We can access this error from the query string via the search params.get function that's available on the URL object passed to the load function by SvelteKit. On the settings plus page the Svelte file, we can check if there's an error and display it under the code input. If we enter the wrong code, you'll see that we are redirected back to the settings page with an error message. If we enter the correct code, we are redirected back to the home page. We've just successfully added two-factor authentication that works. The login page will look similar to the register page, so we can copy over the register code and change the wording from register to login. You can view the page by visiting the login route on the browser. Let's implement the login logic. We create a plus page.server.js file, export an actions object, give it the correct types, and add a default function. We then need to get the request object from the parameters and get the form data via the request.formData method. We can then get the email and password, get our database connection so that we can run the user database search query. To check if the user login details are correct, we are going to do two things. First, get the user by email. If it doesn't exist, redirect to the login page with the error set in the query string. If it exists, we use the bcrypt module to compare the password entered with the password the user set at registration. If the check succeeds, then the user has logged in successfully. Redirect them to the OTP page. Otherwise, redirect them to the login page to retry logging in. Oh, and another thing we want to set is the user ID login cookie if the login succeeds. Let's also add the error message to the login page via the url the search params to get method. In plus page.svelte file for login page, we can access the component data and then show an error message if data.error is present. We can also add styling for the error message as a bonus. Let's test the login page. If we enter the wrong email or password and submit, we should be redirected back to the login page with the error message shown. If we enter the correct details this time, we'll be redirected to the OTP page. Login functionality works. Let's implement this OTP page. On the OTP page, we just want a form with an input asking for the code and a button to submit the code for checking. This is how it looks. We do the heavy lifting on the plus page.server.js file for the OTP page. Authentication here will work exactly as the settings page worked. We can just copy over the entire action from the settings plus page.server.js file into the OTP plus page.server.js file. As you can see, we are getting the code from the form data, the user ID from the cookie, and then getting the full user from the database and using the authenticator function from OTP lib to check the code against the user secret. If all succeeds, we go to the login page. Otherwise, we redirect to the OTP page with the error code. Let's add the error code as part of the OTP page props by exporting a load function and extracting and returning the error from URL to search params.get function. In the OTP page, we can get the page data and then display the error message if it's present. Let's try and test this. Entering the wrong code redirects us back to this same page with the wrong code error displayed. 
Looks like we don't have the styling for the error message. Let's move the styling from the login page to the app.css file. It should look better now. Also, entering the correct code should successfully redirect us to the home page. With this, we have completed our two-factor authentication system. As a bonus, we can figure out how to prevent users from viewing a page if they haven't been authenticated by a code. We redirect users to the home page if they are authenticated, but that page is not login protected. Anyone can still see the page. How do we redirect unauthenticated users to the login or OTP pages? We can add a plus page.server.js file for the home page, and inside the load function, check for the user ID and OTP authenticated cookies. If the user ID is not present, it means the user hasn't logged in. So redirect back to the login page. If the OTP authenticated cookie is not set, then redirect to the OTP page for authentication. Let's try this out. If I load the home page when logged out, I'll be redirected to the login page. If I log in and try to load the home page again, I'll be redirected to the OTP page. This can be worked around though. Since you don't protect the session cookies in any way, a creative user can just manually add them via the browser dev tools and get access to the page. There's a fix for this. We can use HTTP only cookies that are set only on the server so the browser can't read them or change them or use SvelteKit server hooks. Hooks are upward functions that SvelteKit calls in response to specific events. For example, there is a handle function that is called every time SvelteKit receives a request. You can attach data to the event in this function and it will be passed to all plus page to server.js load functions. First, let's convert our login cookie in the login page to our server cookie by adding HTTP only option to the cookies that set arguments. We can also set same site to strict so that only requests from the same site can send cookies and also give it an expiry date. We can also add the same setting to the OTP pages plus page.server.js file. Next, we need to create a hook.server.js file at the root of our roots folder. A hook exports a handle function which has event and resolve parameters. We can get the user ID cookie via the event.cookies.get function. Same thing for the OTP authenticated cookie. If the user cookie exists, we can fetch the user and then attach that user to the event via event.locals.user. Same thing for the OTP authenticated cookie. To allow SvelteKit to continue processing these and other requests, we need to resolve this request and return that response. So with this, the user will be attached to all requests after a user logs in. Back to the home page plus page.server.js file, we can remove the cookies functionality we were using, then just check the locals parameter for the session details. Your session cookies are now secure and authentication still works. That should be all for now. We now know how 2FA works, and how to use the several SvelteKit APIs to implement it. I hope you enjoyed the video and please remember to subscribe if you are interested in more videos like this. Thank you for watching.